Hello, my name is Ben Roberts. I'm Artistic Director of Brighton CCA and I'd like to welcome you to our next exhibition of work by Brazilian artist Alejandro de Cunha entitled Duplex. Curated in collaboration with Jenny Lomax, this is the artist's first major solo presentation in a UK public gallery for 10 years. Duplex is an articulation of de Cunha's engagement with cultures of consumption, reuse, materiality and art history. So as the exhibition opened, Alejandra spoke with Jenny Lomax about the genesis of the exhibition and his approach to bringing together this collection of works. Do you want to say something about titles? Because they're very, very important to you, aren't they? And it takes you often quite a while to settle on the titles. And duplex here, the, the, the relationship to the marina, to boats, to... Um, house conventions and bedsits and Airbnb or whatever. Uh, usually the titles of the works, uh, they appear through the process of finding things. Mm. I mean, often I use titles that they're like in labels or brands of products, things that I used. And uh, so I think it's a, it's a very similar process of finding stuff that I make work. Mm. The titles is also like finding the titles within the work, within mm. the materials. So duplex, is, it's often to these things that they are somehow, they are already in the world and they refer to existing things, mm. but they always play with the idea of like a status of, or a change of, or you know, the idea of like um, referring to a place or to a different situation, so. And the, Ali, the, just looking at this piece now, um, that I think also like the work at the top of the gallery, which um, also has a fresh coconut in it. It has quite a, a bodily feel to it and a feeling of sort of you or the making or its creator or its relationship with us very close to you. Is that something that just happens or is there something in the way that you transform these humble materials that gives that feeling, because they are very human and humane in mm. many ways. Yeah, I guess like I've been always interested in the idea of like the relationship of my body with the work in this very, you know, using these materials that they are like uh, things that you hold or you use like a tower or umbrellas mm. or things that they are like connected to the body but mm. also the way I make the work it's it's very much like you know often I use like even things that I have around or I've used before t-shirts that I was actually wearing as I was making mm. so there is this thing of like embracing the idea of the body but also like throwing my own body in this um, sort of fight with the work mm. I mean I feel um, well, also what I like is that they don't look that messy or, you know, the idea of this bodily thing yeah. is actually quite controlled. Yeah. But uh, I think this, my work in general, it's been always, if there is, the other day somebody said, like, oh, if you have to, somebody asked me, like, what's your work about? And then I have, I couldn't say too much and said, oh, you just give me a word. And that one of the words I said, I think my work is about the body. How did you choose these particular kind of beach towels? Yeah, I mean, one thing that I, th I find really uh, exciting in this show, in which often doesn't happen, is to, have to be able to mix different series in the same mm. show. So this series called Amazons, they were like presented before as a group, yeah. and they were all um, made with found beach towels. The very basic thing that initially attracted me in this idea is that there is a body of a person printed on an yeah. object. It's that a bit like the Turin Shroud or yes. something. <laughs> this, this kind of. This really <laughs> strange idea of rubbing your body against another printed body. Yeah, yeah. And that was to me enough to like, okay, I want to highlight the weirdness of this. I like how you call them paintings. Mm -hmm. Is it, do you see them as paintings in that way or is it just because they're on the wall? Yeah, I mean, this is again another thing that I tend to do is even for myself or in general, I like my work to be an invitation to a sort of category of 
something. Mm. So I like the idea that you can call this a painting. Not this a is sculpture. a sculpture. No, a fountain oh. or a tapestry. Yeah. Uh, so I like oh, this fact. idea of like, I'm making things that people initially relate to something mm. else in the world. Yeah, duplex is such a, a strange and wonderful piece, I think. And um, looking at it, in many ways, it becomes like an abstract drawing and um, very linear and talked about painting and things. Is that sense of drawing and the drawn line something that is of interest? Was that very intentional with this? As in, like in many other works, there is this, for me, this sort of affection to an object mm. and this kind of idea of like escaping or like how one thing can take you somewhere else. So yeah. the idea, I actually, when I found this, there was something really, I, I bought this on eBay or something. But I think two, two ways. One is this very like storytelling, the narrative of this, and the other one is purely formal. So I want mm. to make an elegant relief that has reference to modernism and architecture mm. and many other things, as well as this sort of gritty, yeah. weird story behind. It's, uh, but it's interesting, again, across from Arena, because, uh, you know, I love how both this piece and this piece really use the fantastic height of this space. In Naples, Arena really came down on the floor, so it had this much more draping feel. But here, and, and what's happened with having a wall behind it rather than a window light, the Naples, you get these fantastic abstract patterns behind which, again, I think hint at that kind of interest in modernism and particularly the kind of Brazilian modernism mm. you see, but it's kind of a, almost like another work on the wall <laughs> behind that one. As you see in here, there's some resonances with Next Door, um, certainly with the use of light and um, the sort of municipal part bench that sort of connect, I suppose, to the wheelbarrows and the things in there. But also these two wonderful pieces that are made from uh, not umbrellas so much as um, parasols. So I, what I love about these is that you've chosen particular ones that have been patterned by the sun and the nature is that did you choose them specifically for their yeah again I was uh, this and design. it's a lot of editing and so I, I started buying this parasol like this sun bleached parasol mm. umbrellas that they were just discarded and I was really taken by this you know it's almost this natural tie-dye effect <laughs> so I collected a lot of them and ended up actually making only a few and the idea is to really just stretch a found object. I mean, it's very interesting these light works that um, you know you they're very noticeably plugged in and a light and it was something that was fairly new Mm -hmm. uh, this last year and made wonderful pieces with wheelbarrow ends that kind of reflected into each other and with light. Do, how, how did you come to thinking about light in this way or using light bulbs and light in the work? Yeah, I guess again it was one of those things like it was a very, it was a strange decision. It, I think it was about going against one of my rules. Like mm. um, there was something very strange and um, weird for me to use light in a sculpture because you yeah. sort of, it, they become very domestic, or not domestic, but they become um, functional because th it's almost like they become this lamps or, yeah. you know. The, so I think for me, the tension and what I enjoy in the work is, is to, to embrace the, the dilemma of mm. like, is this a sculpture? Is this a hideous lamp that has been used with recycled materials? And <laughs> instead of taking a position, I'm enjoying this tension. So in, 
you know, because I feel like sometimes this could be like in a shop when actually people sell fancy lamp lamps made of stuff. Yeah. That, you know, um, more and more it's becoming clear to me that I actually don't fully understand the work for a while sometimes. Yeah. And then it's, it's, it's this conversation. I mean, I said this many times, but I'm more recently dealing with the works as if they were like uh, beans. Mm. It's a bit like working with actors and you have an idea of like a choreography, but then they surprise you, mm. they disappoint you, and then they come back in a different shape. And so I think this works because of the use of the light, because of the domestic references, the mm. uh, utilitarian thing. It's, uh, it mm. presents a problem that I'm very happy to exactly. have. Kentucky is actually the brand of the mop, the type of the mop. Yeah, and I love the idea that this this appropriation of like a, a brand that also refers to a place, and just irresponsibly using this without thinking of so much about the cultural reference mm. or the implications of just using the name of a region a place. and it's yeah. a place. So this is actually the. Um, type of the mop, the brand of the mops that I use, which is this cotton um, type of mop. And it's one of the most sort of ordinary mops that you use. I like the idea of the mop, these two things, to, to refer to this purely visually and uh, the aesthetics of this as a tapestry and the labor involved of making and it's almost like weaving. But the, just the idea of thinking of mop or the cleaning mop as uh, many ways to think about the idea of labor that is involved in the use of the mop and uh, in yeah, all the... Because it's kind of hanging above the kind of floor that it would usually be used to clean. Yeah. But it's given this pride of place. Yeah, this is, um, we, this is also really good in this show to be able to mix two series. Like, they were made... like. The they were works from 2013. Yeah, so I collected lots of different types of cement mixes and then all the work was basically removing the blades or the functional part inside and obviously mm. the motor and everything. So just keeping this as a pot, as a urn, and then working on the surface more or less, removing concrete or exposing more the metal that was uh, behind. and. Um, and again, the, the same in a different way, but there is this notion of labor as the labor involved in making the artwork, but also the notions of labor involved in the object. Finally, talk about this wonderful piece, because you've never shown this before, have you? Even no, it's, it's the first time. Work. I'm, again, part of a small series of works made of parachutes um, that I, again, didn't do much to them. These, uh, I just, it's a sort of sandwich of it was a found flagpole just, and then the fabric just hangs over the flagpole. What a wonderful, I think as well, the relationship with the height of the building, but also when this draft's coming in, it's become a kinetic work as well, which you mm. didn't expect, which again, I think it's a lovely relationship with arena and these things at the start of the exhibition. And also, I think the way you've thought about the show, Ali, and I don't know if it's intentional, but there is really a sense of a procession or a walk through where mm. one idea connects to another and you can think back and forward.